Hi everyone, Nick here again, and this is going to be our final video in showing you how to analyze your lists of zip codes from your visitors, your audience, your customers, whatever information you have. Now this, f this last video is going to be about creating dummy variables or transforming variables to get different information than what we have in our zip code list here. So you see we have our full zip code list right here. Then we used VLOOKUP and XLOOKUP formulas to get city information, county information, and state information from our full United States zip code database that we downloaded. Now, one question that I often get is, are how many of your visitors are from in-state versus out of state. So your local audience versus your tourist audience. Now, if you had 100,000 zip codes and a whole bunch of information here, it would be really hard to count down the rows and look at that information. Over here, when we have our pivot table, we just did that in the video right before this, we can see that you know at a glance, it's really easy for the data that we have because we only have 30 zip codes. And so say that I am from Michigan and I want to know what's our local versus tourist audience. So we can see that 80 percent of our um, zip codes are from Michigan. So 80 percent are local, 20 percent then would be tourists. But what if this, t this uh, zip code pivot table was much longer? What if you had hundreds and hundreds or thousands of zip codes from all 50 states and you really needed to summarize that pretty easily? I'm going to show you how to create a custom variable in your zip code database here from your list that will help you do that and we'll use pivot tables at the end to analyze it. But first, so first we need to add a new variable here to this um, table. And so I'm going to just call this local, let's see, I'm going to call it local versus tourist, local v tourist. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to use an if formula. It's going to tell us if this uh, cell right here says Michigan, MI, then I'm going to have it spit out local. And if it's something else other than Michigan, then it's going to say tourist. So let's go ahead and type that in. We're going to put our cursor into this cell up here in the formula bar. Remember, all formulas need to start with the equal sign, so equals. And then I'm going to type if, and now I'm going to put an open parenthesis here. It says, what's your logical test? So I'm going to say if this right here equals, and then in quotes, I'm going to say Michigan, and I need to make it look exactly the same, so they need to be MI in caps. If that equals Michigan, then I'm going to put a comma, then it says value if true. So what do I want to spit out if this cell equals Michigan? I want this to be local, so I'm going to put it in quotes, local. If you want text to show up, it always has to be in quotes. There you go. So then I'm going to comma, and then it says value if false. If the value is false, then I'm going to say tourist. Now I'm going to close my parentheses and push enter. And you can see that it already knows that this cell was Michigan, so it's going to say this zip code is a local zip code. Now let's see if I right click and copy this cell. It'll copy the formula into this. I'm going to click here and paste. And now it's the exact same formula, but it's responsive, so it's pulling from this row of data right here, this row number three here in our um, in our database, which is the second zip code there, but it's also local because it's from Michigan. Now remember, I can copy this down the entire row or the entire column. Just take your cursor here and drag, and we'll take it down to the very last row of data right here. Perfect, and now I can do a little visual check here. So I can see Brooklyn, New York, that's not Michigan, and that says tourists. So everything works out pretty well. Now, if I did that, but I did it for 100,000 rows of data, it would be really hard to just sort of eyeball it. So now what I want to do is go back to my pivot table, and you can see here in my pivot fields, I don't have that new column or that new variable of local versus tourist. So I want to change the size or I want to change the source range for my pivot table. So all you have to do to do that, make sure that your pivot table is highlighted here. Go up to the pivot table, analyze tab, and then click on change source data. So go ahead and click that. It'll get this little change data source button right there. And now it's telling me where 
the pivot table is pulling data from, and I want it to be one more column over. I want it to be A through column F. So instead, right here, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this E, because that's where it's telling me it's pulling from. I'm just going to go ahead and backspace, and then I'm going to put in an F. And once I do that and click OK, you'll see the range. It's going to go back here, and it's going to update. Now in the pivot table fields, I have this local versus tourist. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the state, so now I'm back to my original base pivot table with just that's just telling me I have 30 rows of data. And I'm going to take the local versus tourist, put it into the rows, and now you see I have 24 zip codes that are local, 6 zip codes that are tourist, 80% and 20%. Pretty cool, huh? This is a, a nice way to sort of just transform some data if you have additional questions that you want answered from your pivot tables. Now, if I wanted to put these into a report, you can actually just copy this data just like you normally would. I might actually just copy the entire thing here. But I'm going to just uh, click over here and I'm going to right click and I'm just going to say I want it. I don't want to copy the pivot table, I want to just copy the numbers. So I'm going to go here under paste options and click just values. And you can see it just gives me the exact values from the table here. These are the percentages, but I'm going to have to change those cells to percentage. There you go there. And then you can clean it up just a little bit. I'm going to get rid of this row here and I'm just going to put a number here and a percent here. That's going to look really nice. Maybe let's format them so that they're all right aligned. That looks nice. I'm going to bold those and then maybe I'll bold these. And you know, maybe I don't need this blank row, so I might actually just go ahead and paste the total over this. So I'm just going to click control X for cutting and then I'm going to paste it right up here, control V. That's pretty nice right here. I'll just say total That's going to give me those, and then maybe I'm just going to italicize these a little bit, make them a little bit less conspicuous. And I don't really like italics that much, so maybe I'll just do like this right here. Or maybe I'll just gray them out a little bit and work with those colors. So you could just copy them like this. If I wanted to do the same thing for city, I could do that. Remember, I'm going to go ahead. It's already sorted nicely for me, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to get this, control C for copy. I'm going to go ahead and paste those values. Reformat these so that they are percentages. I'll just copy my formatting from over here. That looks pretty nice. I'm going to get rid of that blank row right there. And there is your perfect table just ready to go. Let's just click on total there. And all you'd have to do is maybe paste this into a Word report or format it with a few little header lines, things like that. I'm going to just drag this over so that you can see all the city names. And it's just put into a really nice summary table. So I hope that you enjoyed this uh, playlist of videos. Remember, you can go back to the beginning and watch start and stop as many times as you want to. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel for updates on data design, Excel, and PowerPoint tutorials. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.